Well, hello everyone. Welcome to my library. So happy that you're joining me here today. Today we are going to make even more discoveries, in this case about the Slavs and where they come from, because I've always been perplexed about the, the story of the Slavs and nothing has ever made any sense whatsoever to me, according to the official books. The official books are all wrong and all rubbish. The Slavs, I believe, are the Suebi, the Suebi are classified as a German tribe. Now the Suebi live in, uh, they live in East, what is now East Germany slash Poland. And if we read the, the, the W, so we have this thing in Polish where we have a, a special letter, it's called an L. It's a W and an L at the same time. So a W or a U can sometimes be pronounced as an L. So the Suebi are Slavi, basically, and th this was a tribe which was classified as a German tribe, and so are all the other Slav tribes. They were classified as German tribes in our history books because they might have been ruled by, say, Germans. Now, there's a Slav origin myth. They came from somewhere in the north, Scandinavia, so it sounds like Vikings, and they entered Eastern Europe, and the chap running Poland was called Lech. Poland is still known as Lechistan for some reason. We're going to explain why. In um, Iran, in Turkey, Lech is not even a historical figure unless you go all the way back. He's a legendary figure. But Lech said, I like this place. I'm going to stay where I am. And he founded Poland. Czech said, no, we're going south. We're going south. I'm going to found a new country. These were three brothers. Czech went south. Rus said, oh, I don't like it here. I want to go to the east. Let's go to the east. And he founded Russia. Now, that's the origin story. So immediately we see that the Slavs may have been mixed up with Germanic tribes. They're treated as Germanic tribes. And this has skewed all of history. And this has caused history to call the Slavs someone else, someone else, another invader who arrived later on. That is not the case. We're going to prove it in this video. I, you know, I'm just so excited. Now, Lech. Lech was a ruler of Poland in about 500 AD. And uh, he's a legendary figure. Medieval Polish historians talk about him, but we don't know when he ruled. And Poland was known as Lechistan in the Dark Ages. So what's going on with that? Why is it still called Lechistan in, in very old countries, such as Turkey, which is inherited the Roman Empire, the East Roman Empire, and Iran, which has always been a country, it's called Lekistan. Why? And here's the thing. There was a, a tribe of Sarmatians. The Sarmatians are North Iranians. And their name, uh, essentially, are the Lass Lassages or the Lachages. And these people lived in Central Europe. They came from the East. And they were... Uh, kind of Slavs slash Iranians. The people who spoke Old Iranian, Old Iranian is European, uh, Indo-European. And, uh, uh, but they, they're in their appearance, somewhat like Bulgarians. The Bulgarians might be Iranians. And these might be the Lekites. In addition, the Lekites were, uh, the, the word Lugi, Lugi is a tribe name of the Vandals. The Vandals seem to have originated in Poland. And Lugi, now I have a Polish background, uh, even though I'm born in Aussie, but Lugi, I can read in Polish as Lugi, people. The Lugi tribe that the Romans described as a sort of Germanic tribe, you can read it in Polish as Lugi. These are the people. And this was another name of the Vandals.
Hey everyone, so these are the Slavs, the Suevi, Suavi, the Suavi, basically, uh, the people of the words, and these people are described as a Germanic tribe, and they were a confederation of the Marcomanni, the Quadi, the Ermi, Ermunduri, Semnonas, Lombards, and others. Now, uh, apparently here the, the Semnonas uh, occupied a territory which just popped up a, a thousand years later as exactly where Poland is. Um, it's very interesting. The Marcomanni and, and the Suebi, the Suebi went south. They were expanded over a very wide area, just like the Slavs did. And um, we know the Germans spread over a wide area. It can't be a coincidence. They, they must be one and the same. This tribe must be one and the same as the Slavs. And this was the time of the Slav expansion. Not that unknown expansion in the 700s or the 500s. That's all a bunch of rubbish. This was the Slav expansion. And... This is very interesting here. Strabo, in his geography, associates the Suebi with the Hertzinian forest. So these were forest-dwelling people, these, these people. And the south of Germania, north of the Danube. He describes a chain of mountains north of the Danube uh, that is like a lower extension of the Alps, possibly the Swabian Alps, and further east, the Gebretta Forest, possibly the modern Bohemian Forest. He talks about, uh, he mentions as Suevic peoples the Marco Mani, um, and and uh, they took over an area called Bohemium. Um, the king took rulership and added the the Lugi um, and the Zumi, the Brutunas, etc., 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 and the Samomnas, which I just showed you. Uh, a large tribe of the Suevi themselves. These tribes tribes were inside the forest and outside of it. Now this is why I think the Slavs acquired the name of slaves because. Uh, being forest dwellers, these people were, were, were poor. They, uh, they didn't have the best land. And the poorest are the easiest to enslave. And I think the, the enslaved them happened in this time during the Marcomannic Wars. And these people, although they were poor, they gave the Romans such a run for their money that it was compared to the Punic Wars against Carthage. Uh, Marcus Aurelius was holed up in a fortress on the, the Danube frontier for three years battling these people who were, were just attacking. Um, they, they slaughtered um, two Praetorian guards. It was an epic, epic war, which was the beginning and end of the Roman Empire, basically. After this, the Roman Empire turned to trash. It was rubbish. It was, it was, it was decadent. Now, um, on the subject of slaves, the Romans didn't use the word slave. The... Not, not, not the classical Romans. If you were a, you, they used the word servant. A man was a servus, and a woman was a serva. And slave came when they they started taking, I think maybe the suebi and or the suavi, and they started working them hard. I reckon after this war, the word slave came into vogue, and the Byzantine used this word quite a lot when they empl either employed or enslaved themselves. Um, uh, the, the Slavs, although I have to say slavery was not po not very popular in the Byzantine Empire. Surprisingly, they had the eunuchs, but they didn't have they didn't they weren't really into slaves so much. They saw it as unchristian. Isn't that amazing? And this territory became Samo's Empire. Not a coincidence. Now these Marcomanni also they came out of the forest. This huge Hercynian forest. I think that was a Slav homeland. And what happened was. Uh, as forest in Latin is Silvestria, the woods, or Sylvan. If you're living in a forest, you're living a Sylvan existence. So Sylvan. We have um, uh, several of the consonants and vowels of the, of the word Slav right here. And I can't help but think that, that this word became attached um, even obliquely to the, the, to the, the Suebi tribes and thus changing their name somewhat. You know, this is so exciting. The Bavarians are Avarians. They're from the East. It seems there was this Avarian invasion and, and these tribes go by so many different names. They, they, they went all the way up to Bavaria. To me, the Bavarians are not like other Germans. They, they resemble Russians to me. They've got the alcohol culture going. Um, to me, they're, they, are, they, they act like Easterners. I think they're from the East. Um, you know, this is, so ex this, is, this is so exciting. In Polish history, we have a, a legendary character called Siemowicz. I believe this is a relation, uh, something similar to the name Samo. 
Samo founded the first Slav empire in history. He was apparently a Frankish merchant. And the Czechs love this history because they, they say, oh, look, we're one of the oldest countries. We go back to 500 AD. And we, were, we, we founded this, this empire, Samo's empire. Now, the thing is, Roman authors say these, these, the, the tribes that were in Samo's empire, these are the Marco Manni tribes who attacked Marcus Aurelius and There was a period of great migration in about 150 AD, and um, these tribes were described as of the same language as cu and customs as the Suebi, who I think were the uh, some other word for the Salavs. And these people were around in 150 AD. They were around in Julius Caesar's time. There was no expansion of Slav tribes out of, you say, Ukraine in AD 500 if they were already there. It's just that they were categorized as Germanic tribes. They might have been half German, half Slav, half Slav. They might have had Germanic rulers and they're characterized as pure Germans, just Germanic tribes. Has 19th century nationalism skewed history today? The Vandals seem to have been Slavs from Poland. In southeastern Poland, which is supposedly the homeland of the Slavs, that's where the Vandals ruled. You can't have it both ways. The Vandals. Uh, there's a legend in Poland associated with the Krakus Mound. King Krak was apparently a, a, a terrible German fiend, a conqueror, in according to Western European medieval historians. In the East, he was a good guy. There might have been multiple Kraks. His daughter was called Vanda, the first Polish patriot. She refused to marry a German king called Rittiger. Rittiger is like Ritter, so it would mean knight. And that, that, that's just so uh, fascinating. And um, so the, the Vandals, they originated in Poland and they went uh, essentially into uh, to take over part of the Roman Empire, but everyone's classified as a German. So there's this whole lost history of the Slavs in Europe. I think a, a Slav homeland would be in the Central European mountains. There used to be this thing called the Hercynian Forest. The Hercynian Forest is the inspiration for Tolkien's Mirkwood. It's in Germanic lore. It's in Roman mythology as well. Uh, Julius Caesar thought that unicorns lived there. It stretches from basically Switzerland all the way into, from the Swiss Alps all the way down to the Carpathians. It was a mountain forest. And it, it really went on and on and on into the Caucasus into Iran, that the forests in North Iran are primordial and they're called the Hyrcanian forest. Maybe the name has a similar origin, might, might have been the same forest. And this is, I believe, where the Slavs may have originated. Now, you can't have it both ways. You can't have Germanic tribes everywhere and the Slavs uh, just sitting in the middle and just ignoring everything and being neutral doesn't work that way. Uh, history is skewed against them for sure. Uh, where does the name come from? The name Slav uh, comes from, it, 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 it's, it, it, you can read it in Polish, it, 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 it's suave, it's word. The people who speak words, and people have suggested this, and they've said that opposes the, the Germans who uh, are described as Niemcy or people who they, it means no, the no people, the people, the naysayers, the people who don't have it upstairs. Um, so you see, this is, just, this is so fascinating, endlessly fascinating. So um, how many of these so-called Germanic tribes uh, were actually mixed up with other peoples? They're all Germans, they're all Germanic tribes, and they're all living on the Rhine, packed together, as if they're not even noticing each other. They're only noticing the Romans. And they're all packed in the one place. And that makes no sense whatsoever. 
Rather, they would have been spread over an area and, and all invading through the one place. And our perspective is skewed by England's position in the world and how they looked at the world through their Roman eyes. But when I saw that Luigi is the Lugi tribe, that showed that everything was, was totally wrong about our history. Thank you so much. Hey everyone, I am a historian and a published author on Amazon. Check that out if you're interested. Also, don't forget to subscribe, share, and hit that bell. And I'm on Patreon if you would like to make a contribution. Cheers and have a brilliant day.